What's up guys and welcome to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Today I am doing another episode in the Great Galactic Farming Guide series and as spoken in last video I said I was going to be doing the Fleet Arena store. But since the Fleet Arena changes all the time and most of it consists of ships, I'm going to be doing a ship grading right away in Farming Guide on ships. And we're just going to go over all of them. And for the sake of time, I'm going to get right to it. We're going to start with the TIE Advanced 1. Yes, it is Darth Vader's ship. It's an A, an easy A. It's a great ship to use. I still use it in my uh, Fleet Arena team. You all know that I've made many videos on that. Grant's target lock. Like I said, Vader's a good character. Can, can dispel... It's just, it's a great ship. It can do a lot of damage, too. By the way, it can be found in the 4B Neutral, the new Fleet Battles area. You can also sometimes find it in the Fleet Arena store. This is something you should farm. He gets an A. Next, we're going to the Phantom 2. Phantom 2, it can be found in the 9D Hark, uh, Dark Side Battles. It can also be found in Fleet Shipments at times as well. So please, please, please farm it. It gets an A. It's a great ship to use. Not only is it powerful and a good reinforcement ship to use in Fleet Arena, it's also needed to get the Chimera. I've spoken about the wonders of the Chimera before, and the Phoenix characters, which are needed to power this ship, are great characters in the game as well. In fact, I've told you best uh, beginning characters tunes to farm in the game. Next, we're going to the Ghost. Phoenix, again, another reason. It gets an A also because it's great to use in Fleet Arena. I also use it as one of my reinforcements. Great with bigs, as I've said before. Also, it's needed to get the Chimera. Good ship to use, and it can be found in the 9C Hard Dark Side Battles. This is not necessarily a waste to farm one because it's needed to get Chimera the way it is, but also when you farm for the Ghost, you're also going to be getting too hard to uh, find equipment, the Mark 8 Biotech Implant Component. And the Mark V Athicam Medcat component. So, you're also going to get those when you farm this. Definitely farm the Ghost. It gets an A. Next, TIE Silencer. Oh, I have spoken to you. You're going you're gonna to get sick of me talking about how awesome this TIE Silencer is. One, it can be found in Cantina Battle 3F. Also with his, you know, pilot, Kylo Ren Unmasked. They can both be found in the same battle amazing awesome i've spoken about that before and it's a great ship to use it can stun it can give itself advantage it can when it has advantage it can do massive amounts of damage with its missiles it gains offense up as the battle goes on amazing ship kylo ren on mass is a great character to have as well it gets an a also next we have the tie reaper the tie reaper when it was 5v5 was considered one of the must-have ships let me tell you People have thought it has fallen out of favor, but I'm going to make a video individually on the TIE Reaper about how it is actually underrated. So I'm not going to give you too much more info because I don't want to give everything away that I'm going to say, but I'm still going to give it an A. One, you can find it in the 9B hard light side battle. Hard to farm. It is hard to farm. That's the only place that you can find it right now too, by the way. And then... The Death Trooper and the Short Trooper are great characters to have. The Imperial Troopers are a great faction to have as well. It gets an A. Biggs Dark Lighter cannot say enough about Biggs Dark Lighter and Big Dark, Biggs Dark Lighter's X Wing. Biggs is a great character to have in general. You can find this ship. It can be found in the Galactic War Store at times and the Fleet Arena Store as well. It's the best tank in the game for ships. I'm going to say if you look at every single lineup, 1 through 100 in Fleet Arena, Biggs is going to be in it. Biggs is in almost, if not, Oh, and not every uh, lineup there is. He's that good. Definitely a ship you should be getting. It gets an A. Imperial TIE Fighter, still used in the top of Arena. And because it is still used in the majority of lineups, it still gets an A. It can be found in the Galactic War Store. Uh, 1C Battles in the new Fleet Battles. And it can also be found in the Fleet Arena store at times as shown as well. It does massive damage, gives itself foresight. When it evades, it gives the capital ship, your capital ship, more turn meter. <sighs> its evasion chances were higher when it was 5v5, but then when the new ships came out, it still seems like it has the high evasion rate. It's not as high as it was, but it still seems to me that I always miss. And it changes the whole dynamics of the battle. Still gets an A, great ship, Imperial TIE Fighter good character to have as well first order tie fighter this ship gets a b one it's basic king grant target lock again huge in a lot of areas of the game when needed when you have bigs and even otherwise 
It has its strafe ability, which can do massive damage, and it resets its cooldown when it hits a target locked enemy. It can it can double hit with its basic as well, which can do, you know, lots of damage. This was one of the best ships to have when it was 5v5. Again, now that it's 3v3, it's changed a little bit. It gets a B. It can be found in the Galactic War Store, as shown here in the Fleet Arena Store. It changes in both of those sometimes. And the uh, First Order TIE Fighter Pilot is a decent character to have for First Order as well. It gets a B. Slave 1. Slave 1. I've made a video specifically on Slave 1. I'm very close to getting him all the way to four star, five, uh, 7 stars. Excuse me. You can find him in the 2B Neutral Battles now. He can also be found in the Fleet Arena Store. He, when he comes as a reinforcement with the new reinforcement abilities, we've gone over this. He can gain massive amounts of buffs. He can do great damage. He can, When somebody's target locked or more enemies are target locked, his missiles can get hit more than one enemy. The Sonic Boom or the Seismic Charge... Uh, ignores protection, does lots of damage. This ship gets an A, and Boba Fett is a great character to have as well. Scimitar. Scimitar used to be a lot higher graded than it was before the rework. This ship is going to get a B. It's still a good ship to farm. You can find it in the 3D neutral with the new fleet battles. You can also find it in the fleet arena store at times as well. It can call stealth and get crit damage. It can crit, uh, crit chance up when it's called in usually as a reinforcement it's called in and it gives stealth to everybody but the imperial tie fighter which then it gives foresight so then you know turn meter keeps on going around there it gets a b darth maul is also a great character to have good ship by no means do not think i am discounting it wedges x-wing wedges x-wing you can find this ship in the fleet arena store and the galactic war store as well at times again this ship gets a c it gets a C. Its missiles can do decent damage. It can, you know, do some average damage with this basic attack. It's just not... Wedge is a great character to have in the game for Rebels. And him and Biggs, you know, really synergize well with each other. But the ship just isn't, isn't anything to call home about. Maybe as a ship you can get earlier in the game, it's okay. But it's going to get a C. Ahsoka Tano's Jedi Starfighter. Now, I have not played around with this enough with the new Geonosian ships and the new Galactic Republic ship reworks to really give it a huge definitive grade, but I'm going to give it a C as of right now. It can be found in the Galactic War Store and Fleet Arena Store at times, as shown above. It has a dispel, which could be great calling in and using it against a Slave 1, this, you know, really pesky. And it does, hits with decent damage. Ahsoka is a pretty good character. It's getting a C. Again, could be, you know, work around with it more. Then Millennium Falcon. For what it takes to get this. And you have to get it in the 5D uh, dark side battles. I'm getting it out of shipment at times as well. It's not as good as it should be. I'm also giving it a C for another vindictive reason. Is the Millennium Falcon should be... You, the uh, Yes, we have the new Millennium Falcon from the new Solo movie, but the original Millennium Falcon from A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, with the original trilogy, Han and Chewie, is not in the game, and it should be. One of the best, if not the best ship in Star Wars history, and it's not in the game. Come on, man. Let's go. It can hit, you know, Rey, uh, Scavenger Rey and Poe are great characters to have. Resistance is a very, very powerful faction, but it, it's just, it's not worth it there are better ships to have and because it is not we don't have the original millennium falcon yet from the original star wars trilogy it gets a c it's just ugh. Ugh. moving on clone sergeants arc 170 this ship gets a c as well it missiles can do decent damage the clone sergeant is actually a decent character as well to throw in with the clones you can find this in the 1a that's the first overall battle in the new fleet battles the fleet arena store and the galactic war store as well it's considered itself a tank it can get some target lock it can also uh, gain defense up and protection recovers 50 percent protection it's a decent ship with the galactic republic you know some of these ships getting reworks it's fun to use with mace windu it's it's gonna get a c moving on kylo ren's command shuttle now i have not played with this enough to tell you that that's not a ship you should get or that's not a ship you should get. But it can be quite interesting. It's going to get a C as well. It's not one of the ships you should farm at first. Captain Phasma, Kylo Ren, the original Kylo Ren, and First Order Stormtrooper 
are great characters to use with the First Order faction. It can be found, as soon as it presses here, in 9A Hard Light Side. It can jam one of its abilities is advanced jamming array. It dispels all buffs and target enemy. Okay. Can remove turn meter, inflict healing immunity. That stuff can't be evaded. Its basic attack can defensive fire, it can deal physical damage and, and gain protection up for it's it's it says it's a support, but it's honestly more like a tank. Target then it has the strike team target ally loots. It's all turn meter, then all allies gain 22%. If we go to its max ability. All allies gain 40% turn meter plus 25% turn meter that that ally lost. This is, again, this is a support ship, but it also can take lots of hits. I consider it almost a tank as well. It's a good ship. It's going to get a C. Um, anything below a C, I would say, is bad. Jedi Counselor Starfighter. Early in the game, this is a ship that you're going to get because you're going to get the Jedi Counselor fairly early. He's one of the first characters you get. If you're going to throw uh, together a fleet arena team... This is definitely not one of the ships to have. You can find it in 8B Hard, 8B Hard Dark Side. You can find the Galactic War Store and the Fleet Arena Store as well. And it gets a D as a ship. Yes, it's going to be one of the first ships you get. It can call an ally to assist. It just doesn't... I mean, and then it... With its... As it clicks on this here, the Stabilize. Target ally recovers. Let's go out of the way. The last ability. 70% protection. If that ally is recover, a Republic, they recover an additional... 30. So it can give 100% protection to a, another Republic ally, 70 if it's not. It's, and it doesn't hit hard enough to be viable for anything. It's a D. It's not a ship I would farm right away by any means. Now we have Plo Koon's Jedi Starfighter. Plo Koon is one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe. I hope he gets a rework and he becomes more powerful. This can be found in Battle 7F Neutral, so it's a cantina battle. It can be found in the Fleet Arena Store. It can also be found in the Galactic War Store at times, I believe. It's considered a support ship. It can dispel uh, debuffs and target ally, and it gains them protection up. And taunt, by the way. Deals physical damage with its basic. Uh, it can gain protection up. If it's target locked, it grants another random ally protection up. So this is the prototypical support ship, if we're thinking about it. The quintessential support ship. And then, inspiring charge allies gain 40% turn meter. All Gal Galactic Republic allies gain health up and protection recharge up for two turns. This will be interesting. I'm actually going to want to start actually getting this ship leveled up more, getting Plo Koon leveled up to a high level because I want to see how this works. This really seems it can, it can help sustain a battle. I'm going to give this ship a C um, until further notice. Rex's Arc 170. It's a tank. Rex is a great character to have in the game. He's still one of the viable reader, uh, uh, leaders in Arena. His Ready Enable. When it's active, it gives Galactic Republic allies plus 10% tenacity. And whenever an ally resists a debuff, all other Galactic Republic allies recover 10% protection. That's huge. Okay? Gaining protection is huge, and that gives it to the whole team. Deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict target lock for two turns. Target lock is huge if they have no uh, no buffs or debuffs. Otherwise, removed 20% turn meter. And then we have the Republic coordination here. And that states that Rex's Arc 170 and another target ally gain 50% turn meter and recover 50% protection. This ability's cooldown is reduced by one for each other Galactic Republic ally. So if you have a lot of Galactic Republic allies, you can keep spamming this ability, giving protection, giving turn meter. He's a support tank, I like to call him, because he can do both of that. It can be found in... Uh, well, right now it says the Guild Event Store. You're definitely not going to get it in the Guild Event Store. That currency is way, 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 way too important. It can be found in the Fleet Arena Store and the Galactic War Store at times as well. It gets a C. Uh, it's a C character. You know, it's a C ship. That's about what it is. The Resistance X-Wing. Oh, the Resistance Pilot isn't anybody to call home about. It's one of the weaker Resistance uh, characters in the game. Yes, it's easier to find. It can dispel all buffs on target enemy. It can daze them. It can remove turn meter. It's it can it its missiles can do some some decent damage. It can potentially expose them. Its basic can deal physical damage. It, it's a D ship. It can be found in one E neutral in the new fleet battles. It can be found in the fleet arena store as well. I think in the Galactic Warster at times as well. It gets a D. It's not much better than that. Poe Dameron's X Wing. Wow, definitely somebody I need to level up. First of all, you can find this in the 3A neutral new fleet battles. It can also be found in the fleet arena store as well. Some of its attacks can't be avoid, evaded. 
Its missiles can do massive amounts of damage. It hits hard. This ship is an A ship. No doubt an A ship is something I need to spend more time leveling up. A lot of people have them as reinforcements in the top of arena now. Definitely somebody you should farm. Next, we have the Embaran Starfighter. The Embaran Starfighter, an excellent tank in the game. One of its caveats, though, is it... it well, let's just we'll just read through its abilities here, okay? Reckless piloting. Whenever a barn stunfighter attacks, it gains 30% turn meter, and target enemies gain 20% turn meter. So, yes, it's gaining turn meter, but it's also granting the target enemy turn meter as well. So it can take a lot of damage, but I don't necessarily like that. Its missiles inflict target lock for two turns on target enemy it can't be resisted deal physical damage to each target locked enemy this attack deals 10 percent damage for each target locked enemy it can do some massive damage and it's basic deal with, uh physical damage to target enemy and inflict offense down and defense down for two turns and it dispels all buffs on them if they are target locked again this ship can be found in the 3d neutral new fleet battles it can also be found in the fleet arena store as well it's a pretty good ship Fives is one of the only, you know, like five clones is the, in the game. So if you're going to get clones to seven star, you'll have them that way anyway. And it can take some massive damage. This ship gets a B. It gets a B. It'd be actually even close to higher up there. If maybe that turn meter wasn't quite a little as shaky. Cassian, we've talked about Cassian's U-Wing before. We're going to make it simple. You can find this in the Cantina Battle Store. It is a ship you should get because it's needed to get the Chimera. It has some decent abilities. It's basic. It can deal physical damage and gain turn meter. It has some of the Rogue One characters needed. It can remove 12% turn meter. Let's go all, all the way up to the 8 spot. Dispel target enemy. If target enemy had any buffs, remove 30% turn meter. Then inflict target lock to nasty down. It can give target lock. It will work well with bigs in situ certain situations. Um, it's Gorilla Strike. It deals special damage and calls target ally to assist. Both attackers have an additional 20% critical damage. That's nice. Critical damage is always nice. The infiltration tactics dispel all debuffs and target ally and grant them and Cassian's Ewing stealth for two turns. If any debuffs were dispelled, Cassian's Ewing and target ally gain 10% turn meter. This ship can be underrated in certain circumstances as well. It gets a B for that reason alone. It's easy to find. It's a rebel ship that can be used to get the Chimera and it can work with uh, giving bonus turn meter and target lock as well. The ship gets a B. Geonosian Soldier, these ship Starfighter, these ships were not nearly as good until the new rework come out. Came out, they synergize very well, especially with Home One. Its swarm aggression states that while Geonosian Soldier Starfighter is active, all Geonosian allies gain 10% accuracy for each active Geonosian ally. In addition, Geonosian St Soldier Starfighter has 35% chance to assist, dealing 20% less damage. Whenever an ally uses an ability during their turn, this chance is doubled for Separatist allies. Separatist Assault, deal physical damage, call random ally to assist, inflict evasion down. If it has target lock, both attackers gain plus 50% offense with this attack. That can that can add up quickly. Trust me. Uh, Gene Ocean Soldier Starfighter has a 25% chance to assist, dealing 25% less damage. It's a good ship. It can be found in the 9D hard light side battles. It can also be found in uh, Fleet Arena Store as well. The Gene Ocean Soldier was one of those characters, if you played the game since opening, that was very, very good um, then. It did a lot of damage back then. It's not very viable now, the soldier in general. Maybe when Separatists get a rework, it will be. <sighs> the ship gets a C. It, some of you will argue higher, but you need all the other Geonosian ships together to really get the effectiveness of all of that. So it gets a C for that ship alone. Then we have the Geonosian Spy Starfighter. This can be found in a fleet arena store guild event store again don't get it from there don't get any ships from there please can be found in the fleet arena store as well shown in shipments but please don't ever buy ships with crystals now the surprise shot when i read into this here states that deal special damage to target enemy inflict defense down for two turns call all other separatist allies to assist this is nice this is what i'm talking about is you want to use all of the other genosian ships as well together because then you get assists and notice it doesn't say anything about decreasing damage with that assist that's huge then we'll look right here at its undermine, deal physical damage to target enemy. This attack deals 50% more damage to buffed enemies. Again, it's going to hurt the, en the enemy for being buffed. That's always a nice thing. And clandestine opera operations, while Geonosian Spy Starfighter is active, all Geonosian allies gain 10% offense for each active Geonosian ally. In addition, Geonosian Spy Starfighter has plus 30% damage uh, 
30% critical damage while stealth, and plus 25% evasion while out of stealth when he takes damage. He and Gene Ocean Soldier Starfighter gain stealth for one turn. This kind of is the glue that fits that Geonosian group together. The Geonosian Spy is not necessarily one of the best characters in the game. It can be fun to use if you like to take out buffs and do massive damage to the more buffs the uh, enemy has. But again, this can be found in the Fleet Arena store as well. It gets a C. Again, it could get higher if the ship, it works great with other Geonosian ships. The grade would be higher in that case. But it's an individual ship, it gets a C. Next, we have the Gauntlet Star or Sunfax Geonosian Starfighter. Excuse me. Sunfax is a good tank. Still used in some of the ancient um, heroic teams of the game. They're the, the raid teams of the game. Its prime target states that do physical damage to target enemy if the target is buffed. Stun them for one turn, which can't be resisted. Stunning a target is always good. Again, this fits in with that other Geonosian group of ships. The air superiority states that deal physical damage to target enemy if attacking out of turn. Also inflict target lock for two turns. This is nice because we saw the abilities earlier that call other Geonosian ships in. There's certain capital ship abilities that can do that. And inflicting target lock is huge. Last, we look at the grudge. While Sunfax Geonosian Starfighter is active, all Geonosian allies gain 10% critical joy, uh, avoidance for each active Geonosian ally. In addition, whenever a buffed enemy starts their turn, Sunfax Geonosian Starfighter gains 30% turn meter. 60% defense and taunt until the end of that enemy's turn. So, he is a tank. He's a taunter. His reinforcement ability is also important. I haven't gone over some of the other ones because they're just not as important right now. But when you get this maxed out, it says stun target enemy for one turn, which can't be evaded or resisted, and remove 15% turn meter from all other enemies. Stunning an enemy, removing turn meter, that's kind of a big deal. This can be found in 2A Neutral, the new fleet battles. It can also be, around, be found in the fleet arena store. This gets to see. It gets a C because it fits in with those Geonosians. If you're going to look at the Geonosian faction as a whole, throw all these ships together, it would get an A. It would get an A if you have all three of them leveled up. The Gauntlet Starfire, one I really need to work on. It's a great ship. I need to get my Imperial Super Commando and Gar Saxon up to seven stars and get this ship into my reinforcements, into my lineup, because it's just it's just excellent. One, Gar Saxon and Imperial Super Commando, they're, you can find them in the Cantina store. So they're not the hardest thing to, not the hardest characters to find. You can find this in 4A Neutral in the new Fleet Battles. It also shows up in the uh, Fleet Shipment, Fleet Arena Store. Its abilities state that it can dispel all debuffs on all allies and grant the protection up for 3%, 30% for two turns. Double for Empire allies, especially if you're running like Vader, which I do a lot. Dispel is awesome. Protection up, awesome. This one states that the Proton Missile Launcher deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict buff immunity for two turns again buff immunity is a huge thing to have especially if you're coming in and you're going to use a ship that can uh, give buffs it's gauntlet assault states that so we get over here deal physical damage to target enemy grant another random ally 25 percent turn meter if it attacks a target locked enemy very nice turn meter and its superior maneuverability gauntlet starfighter has plus 20 speed and gains an additional 15 speed for each other active empire ally additionally it grants plus 25 percent defense to all allies doubled for empire allies since a lot of the people i use are empire and you use the chimera the ship this ship gets an a this is a ship you should farm you should go after it right away get these characters leveled up it's really can be game changing in my opinion and we have the first order special forces tie fighter Whew, as you can see, I don't have this leveled up at all. I don't even have the First Order Special Forces TIE Pilot leveled up at all. I'll quick show you its abilities. It's Concussion Missile. Missile. Deal physical damage to target, target enemy and inflict ability block for one turn and call target ally to assist dealing 50% less damage. If that ally is First Order, grant them advantage for two turns. Target lock gain 30% turn meter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deal physical damage to target, target enemy if this attack scores a critical hit. Inflict target lock for two turns. This attack has plus 25% critical chance. Okay, again, based on a critical chance, the target lock is. The double offensive. Deal physical damage to all enemies and apply a damage over time effect to all other ships for two turns, which can't be resisted. And just for the heck of it, we'll read its reinforcements. It states that all allies gain 40% potency doubled for first order allies all active enemies have minus 20 percent tenacity doubled against resistance enemies and it can be found um you can find this usually in the guild store it's just not a good ship it's going to get a d 
Now that's a grade for all the ships. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't give an F to anybody because there isn't a ship that you can farm right now. I guess let's look at Lando's Millennium Falcon. I almost skipped that. I apologize. Luckily I caught myself. I don't have this leveled up much at all, so it's not fair for me to give it a definitive grade. It can be found in, you have to buy it right now in the packs. Looking at it at its abilities, deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict offense down for two turns. This attack deals 25% more damage against debuffed enemies. Okay. Then we have the calculated enhancement. Deal physical damage to target enemy and dispel all buffs on them. Lando's Millennium Falcon gains 5% critical chance and 5% offense stacking for each buff dispelled until the end of the encounter. Okay. I like stacking abilities. That's very nice. We'll look at the double down. It states that deal physical damage to target enemy with a 70% chance to grant defense penetration up to self and another random ally for two turns. Physical damage, um, target enemy, 70% chance, defense penetration is nice. Coin toss, Lando's Millennium Falcon has plus 5% critical damage for each enemy without a buff. At the start of its turn, Lando's Millennium Falcon has 50% critical or chance to dispel all debuffs on a random ally, dispel all buffs on a random enemy, target lock a random enemy, and grant speed up for two turns to a random ally. These effects can't be evaded or resisted. Whew, that's a lot to go on there. Now let's read its reinforcements. And as it enters battle, Lando's Millennium Falcon gains critical damage up for two turns and copies all buffs on all other ships for two turns. Lando's Millennium Falcon takes a bonus turn for each reinforcement previously called in by the allied capital ship this encounter so this looks like it to be a pretty solid reinforcement ship a lot of people don't have these characters leveled up a lot of people don't have this ship by the looks of it i'm going to give it a b but that's not a very fair definitive answer capital ships i will do in a different video for the sake of this video being very long the way it is but this is a this is a a guide on farming the ships every ship in here is covered that's why the video took a little longer now you know what to go after what characters to farm, etc. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash the subscribe button. Also, please click the little notification bell next to it so you can be updated on all new videos to come. And there will be a few more great Galactic Farming Guide videos to come as well. So peace out and may the force be with you.